See, the way you handle church folk, Lady Catherine, I'm going to give you a demonstration on how you handle church folk. Church folk said, send her away because she's coming after us. The way you handle church folk, you got to shout in their face. The way you handle church folk, and I ain't talking about no cute shout. I mean an ugly backwoods, country, Mississippi, Chula, Mississippi, Greenwood, Arkansas, Scudderfield, Blackwood. That kind of shout right there. You got to let church folk know. You may not believe it. You may not want it to come to pass, but I'm going to shout anyway because I know if God be for me. Church folk look at you when you shout, and they say, don't take all that. You ain't got to do, why she, why she throwing her hair like that? Why she sweating like that? See, they wasn't there, but see, you know what, no church folk? Church folk wasn't there when you was eating vain and sausages. Church folk wasn't there when you had to eat Roman noodles. Church folk wasn't there when you was rolled and pinned to pay gas. Church folk wasn't there when you was sleeping on the floor. If you don't know my story, you can't dictate my praise, because I got a reason. is whenever we have this vision board. And on this vision board, anybody ever done a vision board? Yeah. We get the biggest engagement rings we can find. <laughs> that poor dude ain't never gonna be able to buy your ring. You're gonna be single forever. <laughs> Cause you care about a stone more than a man. You know what I'm saying? Because what's in us really comes out of us, right? Because we're not content because life has taught us how to need things to make us happy. One thing I've learned, I've had the best of everything, all right? I've had it where you can't, I couldn't buy cheese with my credit, and now I can buy all y'all a house, okay? <laughs> so I've had it both ways, and I've realized that symbols and things do not do it for me. Only Jesus can do things for you. Why? Because he's allowed us to hit rock bottom this year to find out the rock at the bottom, which is Jesus. He's allowed us to realize that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But here's what you got to do. You got to get yourself out of this season. Stop allowing yourself to stay in a season that you've expired from so that you can move forward. You know what I love about God? I mean, we look in the Bible and we see a woman that's 90, year, 90 years old having a baby, an old lady having a baby. We see Jonah. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. I'm trying to help somebody in here that feels like your whole life is over because of your bad choices. We've all done it. We got Jonah. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. He's like, no, <laughs> bye, Felicia. I ain't going to Nineveh. I don't like them. Let them burn. Let them burn. Dash between the dates is the most important. It's all you have to fulfill the purpose. So watch what happens. Apostle Paul teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 8. It says, to keep me from becoming conceited, because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Hold up. Talk to me, guys. See, Paul, remember Paul? His name was Saul. He was at one time, perhaps, some, I've heard people say, a serial killer. He wasted the church. That, that Maybe he didn't stone Stephen himself, but at least he decreed or sent the execution orders that, that he persecuted Christians, although he's extremely intelligent and academic. He's a Hebrew of Hebrews, everything else, but he has an encounter with God. And God on the road of Damascus knocks him off his beast. I don't care what you're riding. There is nothing too difficult for your children, come on, for that person that you're believing God for to be knocked off that beast. And, and, and I love it because he gets up and says, who are thou, O Lord? I mean, he's like, he knows this is God. And, and so, you know the rest of the story. And then he totally converts his life over. He's utilized by God tremendously and he's given a great thing revelation one of the greatest gifts I believe that you can be given and never take this for granted is revelation we all have things that we're good at and things that we're not good at we all have strengths we all have weaknesses and let me tell you something it's good to know what you can do but it's even better to know what you cannot do and don't make a fool out of yourself Spending your life trying to be something you're not to prove something you don't even have to prove. How many of you have one of these tonight? Take your Bible and hold it up, okay? Or your phone or whatever it is you're using. I'm still trying to get used to the, everybody looking at their phone for a Bible. You know what, I, I'm a word person. The words in here have changed my life. 
They've changed me. And they'll change you. The word is the absolute truth of God. John 8 says, if you continue in my word, you will, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Amen. How many of you love the word? How many have made your mind up? You're going to stick with the word no matter what. Amen. All right. Why don't you be seated and we're going to have some word tonight. I think you've already had a bunch of word, but we're about to have a little bit more. Now, uh, I've been taken the task by several uh, women that professed to me that they believed that the Lord had called them to the preaching ministry. And when I told them uh, how I felt about it and told them that I didn't believe that the scriptures really sanctioned a woman to, be, to play that type of part uh, in, uh, in the ministry, um, I had to endure... I guess what you would say, uh, a backlash or character assassination because because uh, I felt the way that I felt. But the main thing that they couldn't gainsay against is the fact that I took them to the scriptures and just simply asked them, what am I supposed to do with these passages? And usually when I would say that, they would... Uh, basically go in a whole entirely different direction with the conversation and uh, they would leave from talking to me with a bad taste in their mouth. So such as that was. But we're still dealing with the question, is there authority for women to become lay preachers? So, uh, without wasting any time in dealing with this issue, to the question of whether there is authority in the scripture permitting women to be lay preachers and or pastors, i.e. bishops, the short answer is an emphatic, unambiguous, and resounding no. And this is a short answer. The Bible is very clear on this issue. And of course, we need to reaffirm this clarity of the scriptures regarding this issue. So we have three unambiguously clear New Testament verses in the Bible that deals with this issue. And we're just going to deal with the first one in this lesson presentation. In 
And as we go to the Bible to get clarity on this issue, of course, we're going to have to do a little exegetical work upon these passages of Scripture uh, as we go along. So our first passage of scripture is 1 Corinthians 14th chapter, verse 33 to 38. There it reads, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What came the word of God out from you? or came it unto you only. If any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. So, confusion seems to be the real issue here that Paul is uh, dealing with. For he says from the beginning of this uh, verse, for God is not the author of confusion. Now, the word confusion in this verse means instability, state of disorder, and disturbance. King James Version of the Bible uses the word confusion to translate the Greek word akatastasia. It would seem that the women might have been at the root of some sort of confusion in the church of Corinth. So the Apostle Paul had to deal with this confusion. Now, from a cultural and historical perspective, we know that the infamous temple that was dedicated to the goddess Aphrodite was located in Corinth, actually on the hill of what was called Acro-Corinth, as well as the uh, Delphi, Delphi Temple. The city of Corinth was a seaport town and sailors were excited to dock in Corinth because of the temple activities, especially the temple prostitutes. And of course, when they would dock, they would spend their money at these temples. The Delphi Oracle was the chief activity at the Delphi Temple. This temple had been erected over tributaries that traveled from a volcano to the floor of the temple, which emitted gases through the floor of the temple. So now the priestess that did the temple duties would, in essence, get high off these gases and go into trances, speaking gibberish. Hence the reason why the apostle had to deal with the speaking in tongues issue in the church service. So what is the significance of all this? Well, many of the temple prostitutes were being saved, but even though they were coming into the faith, they were like any other believers, 
overcoming vices and bad habits from being so long associated with paganism. There was very much still a feminist spirit, and we know this to be the case because the Apostle Paul had to deal with it, including women speaking, i.e. preaching, in the church service. So now, as we look at these passages of scripture, we're going to deal with some whys. The word let implies that the pagan men in this church were still letting these women do what they wanted to do, especially letting the women speak. And given the brevity of the situation, who knows what else was going on, seeing these women were former prostitutes. The Apostle Paul was dealing with a mess in this church. So Paul had to correct several errors. Hence, the reason for his language in this letter to, the, to this church. Let your women keep silent. Why? For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Why? They are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Why? And for this why, we go to the Old Testament. Mm Genesis, the third chapter, verse 16, there it reads, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, it has to be understood that uh, we're not talking about, or should I say the Bible is not talking about a type of rule that is tyrannical or heavy handed. Because in essence, when a woman chooses to marry a man, she voluntarily comes under submission to the man that uh, proposed to her. So when we look at this, when we look at this concept of obedience, we're not talking about uh, the, a dictatorship or a heavy handed uh, uh, obedience, or should I say a dictatorship from the man. So we're looking at Genesis, the third chapter in the 16th verse. And this is not the language modern day feminists would like to hear. As a matter of fact, they would despise the Bible because of this language. But as the modern adage goes, it is what it is. So Yah cursed the man, the serpent, and the woman. Adam was cursed for listening to his wife and Eve was cursed for listening to the serpent. So we focus upon the woman's curse. The first curse, the first part of the curse should we say is, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Second part of the curse was in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And third, Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. This constitutes the law that the Apostle Paul was speaking of. And now we take a look at this word silence 
in the text. Now the word silence in the original language means to be quiet or to hold one's peace. So the Apostle Paul is laying down a precept here. The woman are not permitted to speak. Now based upon the language of this verse, women are essentially barred from preaching. And if barred from preaching, they are not permitted to pastor as well. So we will deal separately with women becoming bishops, i.e. pastors, in another lesson. So, given the clarity of this first passage we have dealt with, and so, not to be coy, but to be as clear as we can regarding this issue of women preaching, you Negro women are doing what you want to do. Not what the Bible commands you should do. Shalom. We continue on to our next slide lesson presentation. Shalom. Wake up everybody, no more sleeping in bed. No more backward thinking, I'm for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. There is so much hatred, war and poverty. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they listen to what you have to say. Change again, just you and me.